Another way of showing the number of cases or observations in a category, in addition to bar charts, is with pie charts. Now, I have to mention there's a lot of people in the data visualization world who get very upset at the mere mention of pie charts. But I want to point out there's a few reasons in which pie charts are actually a good choice. Number one is if you're required by your work to use them. If you have a template and they use pie charts, that's what you got to use. Second, there actually is some evidence to say that certain groups of people find pie charts easier to read than bar charts, especially if you're talking about allotment of time during the day. Third, there are some times where a pie chart actually can be easier to read, especially if you're only trying to show one number a percentage. But let me give you a few examples here. I'm going to take the social media followers data and I'm going to come over and click on the insert chart. Now, by default, Google Sheets makes a good choice and creates a bar chart. But we're going to make things a little different. Now, you'll notice, by the way, that I changed the order of things. I put Instagram first. That's because in other examples, I wanted to draw attention to Instagram. But if you're going to have one particular category you want to focus on in a pie chart, it should be the first one. That means it'll start at 12 o'clock and it'll be the one that leads off the impressions. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to chart type. And you can see what we have right here a suggested type is a pie chart. And this is the default pie chart or the beach ball or the pinwheel. And, you know, it's not horrible how it is. I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to change this title here Social Media Followers by Platform. And then I'm going to make one other thing where I put some information here in the slices. Now, the way I do that is by coming over to pie chart, and I'm going to say slice label. Each of these segments is a slice. And I'm going to say label. Now, I realize that what I just put in here is redundant because it says Instagram here and it says Instagram here too. And unfortunately, I can't control what is displayed right here. That's the hard part. But I'm going to show you a couple of things we can do about that. On the other hand, I want to point out these labels. First off, because the medium slice is small, the word medium didn't show up, and Twitter is shown in a different color, which under certain circumstances might be a good idea, but it's a little weird in this one. I'm going to fix that by coming here to, again to pie chart, and I'm going to make the labels a little smaller. I think if I go to 14, no, nope, I got to go smaller still to 12 point there. Then they're all inside. And I can also change their color. I'm just going to make them all white. And so now it's a little more uniform and it's a little easier to read. And Instagram, you can see the one I want to talk about is right here at the very beginning. That's nice. But I want to show you an easier way to draw attention to what you want and to avoid some of the optic, you know, overwhelm of a pie chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this chart. And do copy, paste it, and I'll make a copy. I'll drag it down here. And what I'm going to do them is several things, but the single most important one is I'm going to change the chart type. Now there are two ways to do this. If we were to come back to data here, and you see chart type, it says pie chart. Now let me show you. If we scroll down here. You can see there are three variations on the pie chart. There's the standard pie chart. There's a donut chart. And that's actually the one we're going to use. But I'm going to show you there's another way to get to that. And then there's the 3D pie chart, which is lean back, which actually is a horrible thing for data visualization because it actually distorts the data. It's harder to read. Just don't ever use that. But I can get a donut chart by clicking this one, or I can come back to customize. And you may have noticed this option earlier, the donut hole. Right now it's at 0%. I can make it 25%, so it's a little donut hole. I can make it bigger, 50. I can make it bigger still. You can enter in any number you want. 50% seems to work well for a lot of purposes, especially if you still want labels in there. Now, I'm going to make a few other choices. I'm going to come back up here to chart style. And I'm going to do kind of a fun one here, which is maximize. And that gets rid of the title and it makes the chart as big as it can be. Then I'm going to come down to legend. 
that's these things right here. Facebook, 31.3%. Instagram, 16.3%. I'm just going to get rid of that. So now I just have this colorful donut. I'm going to change the colors of each of these because I want to draw attention to Instagram. So I'm going to click on that and you have to change each of these manually. But I can do it pretty quickly. I'm going to make all the ones that I don't want to emphasize a uniform gray. There's a gray that's right above the bright green seems to work well. And so all of them get to be that gray, except for the Instagram, which I want to emphasize. Now there's one major problem here, and that is you can't tell where the slices start or stop. It's really hard to tell. So I'm going to click back on these, and I'm going to come back up to pie chart and do a border color. And the border color I'm going to use is going to be a lighter shade of gray, say maybe this one right here. It's not much, but it's a makes it possible to tell apart the slices. And so this is a good step. It's a way to see that Instagram is about one six, in fact, it's 16.3%. And you can see how it compares to the others. Now, there's one thing that I personally like to do in addition to this, and I usually do this in presentation software. So if I'm doing this in Google Slides, I'll add a little piece in there, but it can be done here in Google Sheets as well. I'm going to add a number that says how big this is as a percentage. Now, if we come back up here, you'll see that it's 16.3%. That's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to insert a drawing. Now, this is kind of a funny way to do it, but it works. You know, it's a little bit of a hack. I'm going to insert a text box. I'm going to type in the number 16%. And then I'm going to make it a pretty font. I'll use Garamond. And then I'm going to make it much larger. I'm going to bring it up to 48 point. I can make that box a little smaller. I hit save and close. And now it's over here floating on the side, but I can just click on that, drag it over and sort of eyeball to position it in here. And now what you have is you've got a number in the donut hole that says exactly how big the one highlighted piece is, and it makes it really easy to read. And so this is a situation where I actually think that pie charts, or really their relative, the donut chart, can make it easier to present a kind of information and can give better clarity to your presentation.